Hi everyone, it is February 19, 2016. I don't know what I'm going to say in this video. I don't know how long it's going to be. But I am horrified at the human condition. I am horrified at the level of consciousness that most humans are at and stay at. Rare dolphin dies from mob selfie. All these people, adults, children, passing around this baby dolphin, taking pictures, laughing, grabbing, keeping it out of the water for so long that this is the result. How is it? How is it that we have so many human beings at a level of consciousness where they can do this? How is it that all of these human beings are brought up in a way that they don't see other life as equal to them? How can they not see this dolphin as not terrified? How can they do this and not realize that this would be the result? What makes the difference between those of us who feel, who respect other life, other species, and the majority who don't? It is so heartbreaking to see this. Throughout my entire adult life, I cannot tell you how many times I have encountered human beings abusing, capturing, killing other life. I could go on and on telling stories 24-7 of just my own experience of watching so many other species suffer at the hands of human beings. Abject disrespect for this life. To have a few minutes of fun with this baby dolphin that in the end dies. D There's a level of consciousness where I think most people reside, that they don't even think about life. They don't take it seriously. They don't, look, I'm not someone who is going to tell you what life is about. My entire adult life, I have wondered, what the hell is this all about? What are we doing here? And a lot of that comes from my own upbringing my having experienced abuse and neglect and, and suffering. And I grew up as an adult wondering, what the hell is this all about? But I did come to some conclusions, conclusions that I don't impose on anybody else, conclusions for my own self that, okay, well, can't answer any of the big questions, but I have a sense that I am here to grow, to work through all of my issues, to try to become whoever I was meant to be, which mandated I work through my issues that I grew up as an adult having, that I, I, I recognized that life is a process and I really did see it as something that it was a growth process. 
you mature. You raise your consciousness. You try to become a better human being. And there were so many things that I read that so influenced me, so many things that I heard from other people that influenced me, so many experiences that I've had with other species that taught me the important lessons to respect all life, that you don't have a right just because you can, because you're a human being, you do not have a right to abuse other species. You don't have a right to just take another species, because you can, out of its natural habitat. You know, and I could, I could go on forever talking about all of the experiences that I've had. A new neighbor moves in close to the river. They don't like the beavers who live there, so they keep trying to capture them, and they split up the family because they can't capture all of them. But those beavers that they did capture, they drove miles and miles and miles up the river and released them there but they split up the family. But that didn't, that didn't matter. They just wanted to get rid of the beavers from the river because they couldn't figure out for them, for their own self, how to live in harmony with the beavers. The frog, I'm walking along the street with a father and a son and the son, I don't know, 10 years old. We walk across a little bridge where there's a creek and the son sees a frog and he runs and he grabs it and he picks it up and he's walking home with it. And I am horrified. I'm shamed and ridiculed for the things that I say, but I can't not say them. So I say to the father, in, in the nicest way that I can, that perhaps maybe it would be important to teach his son about respecting other life. No, I did not feel that that son had a right to pick that frog up from its natural habitat and just take it home. Yeah, I am somebody who thinks perhaps a frog would be scared, perhaps a frog just wants to live its life in its natural habitat, not in a tank, a small little tank. Or the, the, the turtles that I have seen on the road. And there's something inside me that can't keep driving. I have to stop and move the turtle, but I'm laughed at. I come to South Carolina and I'm staying in a hotel and I'm outside talking with some of the employees and I don't know how we got onto the conversation. Frankly, I can't even remember anything because what I do remember so shocked and horrified me. One of the women in the conversation said that her son who had just gotten his license and he was driving, and he sees a turkey in the road. And he says, Mom, Mom, please let me get it, let me get it. And she says, OK, but you have to wash the car. So the son aims the car at the turkey and kills it. I didn't know that there were so many people in this world who actually like to aim their cars at animals on the road. And I didn't know that there were so many people who actually take enjoyment out of just causing so much suffering. It, it really, 
What makes the difference? I know that a lot of my subscribers will identify with what I'm saying. I know that a lot of my subscribers are very similar to me, that they come across these stories and wish that they didn't have feelings. I can't not feel for this dolphin. You know, sometimes I think the depopulation agenda is a good idea, but unfortunately, the killing off of good people will and is included. We need more people with a high consciousness more people who are actually connected to their feelings, more people who respect life, not just the human life, but all life in this world. And how do we get there? It's parenting. It's parenting. Teaching the young to respect all life. I'll end with this story. When I got my first German Shepherd, when I moved out of Manhattan and moved to Massachusetts, I got my first German Shepherd. Incredible dog. I didn't, I wasn't aware or conscious of my own sick thinking with this dog. Now I was never abusive physically to any dog. I've always loved animals. But my thinking at that time was that I wanted to train that dog so perfectly that it would jump to my every command. Why? It was an extension of myself. I wanted people to be wowed by my training. So my dog at eight months old was a very, very tall German Shepherd. And my neighbor came home from work. He was wearing his suit. He got out of his car, and my German Shepherd went running over to say hello to him and jumped right up on him. And I ran over, and I was horrified, and I apologized profusely, and I actually said this. I haven't broken her spirit yet. And he looked at me and he said, I hope you never do. And it hit. What he said to me, it, I will never forget it. I learned from my neighbor who just said, I hope you never do. That was my consciousness then. It's important for human beings to say something to other people when they are wrong, when they are doing something that is clearly wrong. I learned from that man, and I will never, ever forget that moment. It has stayed with me forever because it was so important. We don't get to break animals' spirit. But I did learn. I heard what he said. It had such a profound influence on me in terms of my thinking about other species. No, my job, my job with my dogs from that moment on it completely changed my entire thinking about training. I, from that moment on, saw my dog equal, as an equal partner. And yes, obviously, it is our responsibility to train our dogs so that they behave well. But she no longer had to snap to my commands. She had her own life, 
She had her own soul. She had her own spirit. And it was my job to foster all of that. It was my job to take care of her, to meet her needs, food, health. But it was also my job to give her as much freedom as we can in this world. To train her so that she came when I called, when it was necessary. So that she didn't jump up on people. But it was also my job to allow her to be. It was my job to love and care for her, but it, w it never felt like a job. That just came naturally. And yet I, I have had friends, I have had, I have encountered people who are so unlike me. And I've never known what the difference is. All species have a right to live their life without human intrusion. Yeah, I could go on telling you story after story after story. All the dogs that I've rescued and coming across friends who, who had no respect no respect, no care for their own animals, no feeling inside them. And I, I, and these are the same people who do nothing to grow as a human being themselves. Nothing. It's one of the reasons why we're living this nightmare today. I mean, human beings, most don't even care about their fellow human beings. How much suffering do other people cause other people? How much suffering do families cause, cause one another? You grow up thinking that what you hear from adults that they're telling you, don't lie, love, you know, and respect all of the other people, and don't judge. And then you become an adult and you realize that Almost no one does any of that. Because we grow up as children realizing somewhere in our subconscious, not fully understanding, not being able to articulate what it is that we're experiencing, but what we experience is that adults who are saying these things are full of shit because children see adults judging one another and lying and not loving. And then they become what they see because words really have no impact if the words spoken are not lived. And I have very, very often, throughout my adult life, thought, I wish that I had lived before the Europeans came to this continent. I wish I were born a Native American and lived amongst Native Americans who actually valued life, truly. Look at this mob. We will get nowhere. We will get nowhere unless the individual works to raise their consciousness and grows, matures, 
respects all life. We will get nowhere. How many people do that? How many do you think in this mob cared about the death of this rare baby dolphin? Sorry guys, I'm perhaps I'm needing to share this because I need support from you. This is hard. Yellowstone to slaughter up to 900 bison. What the hell is wrong with us?